Alan Donenfield has been an investor and strategic advisor for more than 30 years now. He's the founder of the New York-based firm Paragon, which has a particular interest in China. Almost a third of its portfolio is invested in the Asian nation in industries ranging from healthcare, energy, technology. I'm pleased to say that he joins me live now from the Bloomberg Link China conference event that's taking place right here in London. Mr. Donenfeld, thank you so much for speaking to us. Great to have you on the show. And we were hearing a little bit there about the SEC's allegations, their investigation into Long Top. Uh, and I guess it highlights the risks when it comes to investing in Chinese companies as well as the rewards. Right. Uh, Long Top is a uh, unfortunate incident where it sounds like the uh, chief financial officer and maybe other company executives have provided uh, fraudulent information to their auditors, uh, Deloitte. And uh, I haven't followed the case specifically. It's not a company that we're invested in, but it is uh, hopefully one of uh, just a handful of, of frauds that have been committed. Is a lack of transparency something to consider if you are an investor looking to invest in Chinese companies, you know, even if they are listed in the U.S. and, and other Western countries? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, all of the uh, public companies that we invest in are U.S. listed, but even if they're listed in, uh, in Hong Kong or other exchanges, they're all audited. The ones in the U.S. are... Uh, the auditors must be PCAOB certified, public company accounting oversight board certified. So there is uh, extensive work done by auditors. The problem really lies with the veracity of the information that the auditors are getting from the chief financial officer. So it's isolated companies and individuals that are committed in these frauds. Yeah, and I guess that's precisely the problem because, you know, that to comply with regulations, yes, they're bringing auditors from, from big uh, companies on board, but nevertheless, those guys, those auditors are reliant on information they're getting from the company itself. Uh, and is that something to think about, the kind of quality uh, of information uh, that you're getting from a lot of these companies, even if they are listed in places like New York? Right. What we typically do is we have people on the ground in China who do their own insight, uh, on-site due diligence at the company, and we often hire third parties to do that due diligence because oftentimes the scope of an audit by Deloitte or any other firm in doing an audit is to send out confirms and to verify the information that the company is saying. They don't really go behind the numbers, talk to customers, talk to the bank, and so you often do need other due diligence to occur rather than just relying upon an audit report. Sure, that makes sense to, to do your research thoroughly and, and to even have a team on the ground uh, that can uh, do get all the details for you. And where do you see the best investment opportunities in China right now? I understand that you've got a particular interest in energy and healthcare. Why is that? Well, the, the market that we uh, invest in right now is U.S. listed companies. Uh, they're, they're all Chinese companies. Typically what's happened today, because there have been other frauds committed, the valuation multiples in the uh, 50 to $250 million market cap range, valuations have fallen to anywhere from three to six times net income. These are substantially lower valuation multiples that are exhibited by very similar companies listed on the Hong Kong exchange. In fact, in some cases, we're looking at buying into the U.S. listed Chinese companies at this three to five times P.E. multiple, delisting them from the U.S. exchange, and then relisting on the Hong Kong exchange at about triple the value. So it's an arbitrage between the valuation that's been oversold in the U.S. and relisting on the Hong Kong exchange. Fascinating. Great to get your insight. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Alan Donenfeld.